Hi, greetings everyone. This is Mr. Mall, and I'm doing a short podcast on measurement error. So, sometimes we are a victim in the chemistry lab or in any sort of lab situation to our instruments, uh, the things that we are using to make measurements. Um, so, what can we do? What we have to do is we have to be able to recognize when there's error and what are the possible causes of error um, to see how it has affected our data. We can't just trust blindly the instruments that we're using, um, and even if we're being as careful as possible, we're going to find out that our results are not always going to be accurate, but sometimes they might be precise. So we're going to look at the differences between accuracy and precision, and we're also going to talk about two different types of error, random and systematic error. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about accuracy versus precision. Now, a lot of times in everyday language, these words are actually used interchangeably, but it turns out that they don't mean the exact same thing. So let's look at the difference between the two. Um, using a dartboard has, has been one of the best ways um, to kind of see this difference made really clear and understandable. So we're going to start with accuracy. Okay, so think about you're going to go, uh, maybe you're good at darts, so you're going to go out and do some archery. What do I mean by being accurate? Most of you would probably say that you are going to hit the bullseye, and you'd be right. Accuracy, accuracy means closeness to the true value. Now, in this case, we're talking about a dartboard, so we're talking about the closeness to the center. Um, but this also can apply to, uh, you know, some physical measurement. Um, let's say, for example, I have a a 10 gram. Let's say I have like a, a 10 gram. Uh, a 10 gram mass. So I have my 10 gram mass. Okay, this is 10 grams. And I throw this thing on a scale. Okay, so when I read that, and I throw it on the scale, well, I know it's 10 grams. So if I put it on here, and it reads 10.0 grams, well, its true value is 10 grams. And this scale was reading that accurately because it was close to 10 grams. So there's accuracy. So we would think of that uh, that dartboard analogy. There we go. The center of our dartboard is going to be something that's accurate. Okay, so let's say um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this here. Let's see if we can do this here. Actually, we're just going to clear the whole screen. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about precision. There it goes. It popped up. Precision means reproducibility. So let's say I take that same 10 gram block. And let's say I, I pull out 10 grams. Let's say I pull out a different mass massometer here. We're going to go ahead and throw this on there. And I get some different measurements. Let's say I get, uh, let's say 8.1, 7.9, uh, 8.0, 8.1. Now I take, let's say I take 10 measurements, and they, they kind of look like this. So I'm looking at this number 8.1. Um, I know it's a 10 gram mass. So looking at these numbers, is it close to the true value? 8.1, 7.9, 8.0, no. well no. It needs to be reading about 10 grams. But what these values are is that as I keep taking measurements, this instrument is consistently wrong. It's consistently giving me this value of around eight, um, even though that's not the true value. So precision is what we call reproducibility. So if I use my little dartboard analogy, um, I throw these darts on here, bam, 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 and they all land in an area close to each other. Even if they are not accurate, they can be precise as long as they are close to each other and our instrument is reproducing that same error. Okay. So this is what we call uh, precision. So let's take a look at uh, some different sources or different types of area. I'm going to go ahead and clear that out there. We're going to go ahead and talk about some different... Um, sources of error um, and look at those. Okay, so two types of error. First one we're going to talk about is something called random error. Um, it's just like it sounds. It's error that can't really be attributed to anything. It might be uh, it might be from the person taking the measurement. Uh, it might be you know their technique. It might be some kind of fluke. Just kind of random. There's no systematic, uh, it's not continuing to do something. It's kind of a random error. So random errors occur when a series of measures, so we take a series of measures, 
So I'm going to give you an example here. So let's say I take that same uh, mass and I get 10.0, I get 9.5, I get 11.1, .1, I get 8.9. Now granted, this is the exact same instrument I'm using, but I take a series of measurements. I just take a bunch on here. Um, and so notice, the, the first one was true, uh, then it went down a little, then it actually went up a little, and it went down a little bit. We're just kind of going all over the place. Okay, so some of these are positive, some are high, some are low. Okay, so this is this would be an example of a random error. Um, another type of error is what we call a systematic error. So let me clear this out for you here. So in a systematic error, um, what happens is Let's give me an example of some systematic errors. So I take that same mass, and let's say I have something like 8.9, uh, let's say 9.5, 10.0, 10 11.1, uh, 12.1. .1. So what's happening here, systematically, my numbers continue to go up. Now granted, remember, this, this is still using the exact same instrumentation. So my numbers just keep going up. Um, there's some kind of pattern here. Okay, this is not just random. There's some kind of systematic pattern. So perhaps uh, we'll say measures consistently, okay, consistently. Now in this case, it could be consistently. Uh, they could be going up. So measures consistently uh, going up. Let's put going up here. Going up, down. Um, so like this, or maybe it's counting down. Uh, also going up, going down, or uh, it could be way off the mark. It just be, could be systematically wrong, or we'll just say all wrong. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I take that same mass, and just like a second ago, we looked at that example, it reads 8.0, 8.1, 7.9, 8.0. .1, so obviously there's something wrong with, uh, with our instrument we're getting consistent results, we're getting precise numbers, but these numbers here, um, they're all wrong. Okay, They're systematically all wrong. So that would be another example of a systematic error. Okay, so we've talked about types of error. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out for you. Uh, what we're going to talk about finally, last, is sources of error. Okay, So where are these errors coming from um, as we're going through the lab? So the first source is the most obvious one. Uh, who's ever actually taking the measurements. Okay, so you, uh, you or your partner. So some of this is to be expected. Some is expected. We're humans. So we make mistakes in the lab, uh, just like anyone else would make a mistake in the lab. Some is expected. Okay. Um, so what happens is we look at, uh, at as, as a human, we have what's called an error range. Error range. Yes, humans have error ranges. So let's say, example, our range of error as a human, at least for me, uh, let's say when I make a measurement, consistently my measurements are plus or minus 1, uh, let's say plus or minus 0.1. So what this means is that when I go to the lab and make a measurement, um, my measurements are going to look like this, 10.0, 10.1, 9.9. .9. Okay, my error range here would be plus or minus 0.1. We call that an error range. Um, so that's kind of like our little guess, our little estimation, where we try our best, um, and depending on the measurer, human error with a certain instrument may be plus or minus 0.1. Um, now when I started chemistry, I can guarantee you mine was probably bigger than that. Okay, we're going to also talk about another source of error. Um, well, let's first talk about what are we going to do about this source of error for you. Okay, some is expected, but what are we going to do? So what we could do um, is maybe learn how to use the instrument better. Maybe we need to be retrained on how to use it. It could come from uh, misuse. Um, so what we can do to, to account for this human error? Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, if I had a human error for uh, the startboard analogy and I threw a dart on there and it was way off the mark, what could I do to reduce that amount of error? Could I possibly throw more darts? And if I keep throwing more and more darts uh, and I get better at it, don't you think that that error is going to kind of minimize as those uh, those darts that kind of went off the mark are going to be less and less significant as we get closer and closer? So the way we can correct this, I'll just say corrected by uh, multiple measures and averages. 
multiple measures and averages. So let's say you had one bad uh, you had one bad measurement. If you take a bunch of measurements correctly, then that bad measurement won't count as much, uh, and so that human error can kind of be corrected out. Um, that random human error. Okay, um, we're going to also talk about. I'm going to clear this out here. The other source of error, and that would be the instrument itself. Um, not all error is, is human error. You can't blame all error on a human, just like you can't blame it all on the instrument. So we're going to talk about instrumental error. Um, so what do we have to do with the instrumental error? This is our great example of our scale that, remember, was consistently reading close to 8 when it was supposed to reading close to 10. So what we can do with that, uh, with that to correct that error, okay, so we're going to say um, corrected No. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to fix this here. Uh, thanks for bearing with me from current slide. Okay, here we are again. So we're going to go ahead and here we go. Corrected by getting a new instrument. Okay, new instrument. So I'm going to take this instrument that's obviously not. Uh, working correctly and I'm going to find a different one see if that solves the problem or um, a lot of instruments especially in science we do something called calibrate so we could calibrate that instrument uh, so maybe the screw is loose remember our example where the numbers kept going down systematically you know maybe the screw is loose or if you're talking about a thermometer maybe the thermometer had a leak in it so there's like this systematic error that just keeps getting worse um, so Either we need a new instrument because it's broken, or the instrument actually needs some calibration. Uh, maybe we need to tighten that screw. Um, maybe we need to kind of re-zero the scale and calibrate it so that it's measuring closer to the true value or more accurately. Okay, um, so this is, uh, in closing, uh, these are our two sources of error, you and the instrument. Um, and as we go through the lab, we're going to try to minimize these sources of error. And as we talk about significant figures, um, taking into account this error as we make measurements and do some math with that. So I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys in class. Thank you.